So check this out. Here's something interesting I picked up a lot of years ago, and uh, a few years, you know, several years ago. And check this out. Has anyone ever seen this before? Isn't this cool? This is a auction book from 2002. It's the Nicolas Cage collection. <laughs> Nicolas Cage had a lot of comic. Yo, Nicolas Cage. Most of y'all probably all know. All, I know all you guys probably know, but I didn't know. I didn't know back then. I had ran. I don't even. Again, I can't even remember where I got this thing. Fifty cents. But I ran across it. I got my. You know, a lot of times I don't know how I get my hands on stuff. I just happened to run into it. So Nicolas Cage auctioned off his uh, comic book collection. And every book he ever owned is in here. This whole book is dedicated to him. And it's so cool, right? The Nicolas Cage collection. Nicolas Cage has some cool comics, man. He owned, he owned some nice stuff. Let me show you a little bit of stuff he owned. This is some of the stuff that Nicolas Cage had in his private collection. Look at that. Planet Comics. All his stuff was, uh, was, was graded, too. Wow, what a collector he was, right? Look at that, man. He... I guess when you're a movie star, look, he had early Marvel comics. Look at that. Look at those early Marvel comics that he owned. Wow, look at that. He, he, he No, he was a big fan of the uh, Human Torch. Look at that. Ooh, wee. He had some dope stuff. Man, this must be nice to be a movie star. You can afford books like these, right? What a collection he amassed. What a collection. Look at those, man. Wow, look at that. And you know what? If I had the kind of money he had, I'd do the same thing. The only difference is, my stuff will never end up on no auction block. That's for sure. Not, not, not while I'm alive. <laughs> All right, check this out. I love these when I first seen them. More Corbin's work, and it's called. Uh, this is called Rich uh, Rich Corbin's Den Saga, number one. Oh my lord, love stuff like this. Now I know where I got these. There was a comic book store uh, on Twenty Third Street and uh, between Sixth and Seventh Avenue, a little shop. I used to go there every Wednesday, every Thursday or Friday after I got my check, and I'd rummage, I'd go there and hang out for about an hour or so. And and I and I, in unlike a lot of people, I go to the mature section, to the adult section, the XXX section, because I do happen to, I do like to collect um, sex comics. For nothing freaky, just just again, I like collecting different stuff. But this this was in the adult section. I said, what's so dull about this? It looks like a regular comic book. But in this guy, Den, most of the time in his comic books, he's walking around nude, you know, commando style, swinging. You know, women with big breasts and his, his joiners out. He's having uh, some hot sex and everything. It gets busy, man. But I liked it. I liked it for the way it looked. It wasn't a high price. And it was by my man, Rich Corbin, who I actually respect and, and like as an artist. So the Den Saga. So I got number one Den Saga right there, number one. It's in pretty decent shape too. I also bought number two. Here's number two. Den Saga number two. Kind of cool, right? Don't know what he's doing behind that rock with that chick. But uh, they're doing what they do. This guy kind of remind me, uh, you know, in, in the world that way she was in, it kind of remind me of a Conan a little bit. I, I love this guy. I love this comic book. Here's a, a Nam number one I collected. I don't know why. I'm not, I'm not a fan of war comics particularly. But I don't know. I don't recall how I got my hands on it or why I bought it, but I did. Here's a Nam number one. Nam number two. You know. 
kind of messed up in the back. I think something. That's NAM number two. Sorry about that. Saw something written on there. And then here is NAM number seven, NAM magazine. I, Mo and Mikey, I bought it because of the uh, uh, Vietnam history. My dad is a Vietnam veteran. My uncle Charles is also a Vietnam veteran. So that's probably why I bought it. Ah, see, I knew. I this, this, believe me, this, these things I'm showing you, I forgot I even had these things. I forgot I had these books, man. Check this out. And I love stuff like this, man. I love these big, oversized books. I love, look, I love the artwork. Look at that. Look at them two guys. Those guys are crazy. Yo, you're about to get smashed and clobbered at the same time. It's it's smash it's smash clobbering time from the boys, right? Look at that. It's nice, right? Nice piece. Nice piece right there. Nice piece right there. Yeah, here's something I I I I, I didn't I didn't realize I had. I enjoyed it a lot. And this is this is way before I even got into uh, way before I even got into uh, Meta Barons. I came across this some years ago. I don't know. Again, I don't remember where I got it, but I have it. Mobius Two, the Collected Fantasies of Jean Gerard. Nice. Nice, right? Taking all these things out. My favorites right here. These are some of my these are my favorites as well. These this is my Conan my Conan saga uh, number four. I love it. Conan saga number four. The reason I love it because I'm a, I love um, uh, full length Barry Windsor Smith is one of my favorite artists big time. Uh, three uh, th full, three full length stories by Barry Windsor Smith and Roy Thomas, The Wrath of Anu, Rogues in the House, The Italians of Thack, and it, there's the reprints of the original comics that came out. Check it out. You know, this is a Barry Windsor Smith cover. Beautiful, isn't it beautiful? Beautiful, right? Conan Saga. A little bit yellow on the page. Got the old paper. Got a little yellow there. But look, got the Barry Windsor Smith art inside. Love this stuff. Oh my lord! <laughs> That's one reason why I never gave it up. I never, I never gave it up, man. It may be a reprint, whatever, but I got it and I love it. And I've read it over and over, and I love them, man. Love, just love them. There's a Savage Sword of Conan, number 142, November. I'm really ashamed of myself for what I let, what I did to let these, I let these books go. I don't know why I did that. <coughs> you know, it's, I, I'm really ashamed of myself. Here's um, the Conan Saga, number two, not in the greatest shape. Got the bent spine. Yellowing pages, some bends in it, but it was like that when I bought it. The original stickers on there. The original sticker is still on there. Price was one dollar. That's probably why I bought them back then. But I failed to get the proper paperwork, proper uh, boxing. But when I seen them and I opened them up, 
and I saw it with Barry Windsor Smith re re reruns, I probably just knowing me at the time, I grabbed them up. That's uh, number two. Here's the Conan Saga number eight. Also Barry Windsor Smith. And Conan Saga number one. Barry Windsor Smith. Conan Saga number six. Barry Windsor Smith. Conan Saga number seven. Barry Windsor Smith. Here's one I here's a Conan, Savage Sword of Conan. I bought no cover on it, but he was selling it for a dollar, so I bought it anyway. <clears throat> when Spider Man had first hit the scene, I went and grabbed a couple of magazines on the on the subject. You know, this is a magazine. This is also a uh mad magazine cover of Spider Man. <laughs> And here's something I bought and didn't realize I, I, I bought this as you saw I said I did a video on this the techno priest I bought this before I bought the fat book but I didn't know I had this I didn't know it was the same book I didn't realize it when I bought the bigger the whole when they put the whole series collected together in that big binder which I did a, I did a video on that I look back and go oh look I had it book number two rebellion but what I did is I never followed I never followed up on getting the individual issues of this. But I'm glad I did and I, I had it all this time. And they weren't here. And this raggedy old thing. So I owe it to myself now. I gotta go out and I gotta make sure I get some boards and some bags. And I'm gonna wrap these babies up nice and tight. Because they deserve a better home than what I've given them. And I'm ashamed of myself for letting them sit out like that. So, But for the meantime, they're, they're in here. They're protected. Nylon, plastic. As best as I could until I get the proper sealing. So it's a, it's a zip line. Plastic. You can see right through it. It's perfect size for some magazines. Sealed. See through. So let me get them all settled. Oh, last but not least. <coughs> I got these at uh for fifty cent a piece at the Goodwill store. <laughs> it's a dog's life, Charlie Brown. Little 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 um little carry manuals, which I love. I love these kind. I thought these were cool. Check them out. Just got some just some classic peanuts in there. You know, good stuff. Good read too. <sighs> there you go. <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> All right. It, oh, oh, we lost it. There we go. Wait a minute. Let's get that settled there. I think it was up there. I don't know. Right there. Right there. Right there. Okay. Right there. Oh, okay. So, yo, I hope you enjoyed those, man. Those were cool. I, I. I forgot I even had them, man. I really did. I forgot. Jarred my memory. But if I hadn't been looking in that box, I would have never known from years from now, even from years from now. But I'm glad I ran to them. I'm glad I got to show them to you. I hope you enjoyed seeing them and some of them. They're really cool pieces. Little good books to carry. I'll hold on to them for a while. Until one day, uh, hopefully I'll be able to pass them on to someone who loves them just as much as I do. So I'm out. This is your boy Tone from Click C for Comics. Excuse the angles and everything. I like to have fun with stuff anyway. And you know our motto. Collect them all. Peace.